thank you very much. Uh, so my name is Joseph Malisawa. I'm the Vice President for Ndola Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So uh, the Ndola Chamber of Commerce and Industry has been around uh, from 1932. And uh, we are a business advocacy group that lobbies and engages government and other stakeholders on a better business environment, on policies that promote a better and suitable business environment. So our membership ranges from corporates, large corporates, to mediums and small uh, uh, enterprises. So we have uh, just about 100 members and uh, like I said, these are in sectors such as manufacturing, uh, the service industry, and uh, they cover various uh, parts of the economy. So what, what the Dollar Chamber of Commerce does is it engages with uh, government and institutions such as yourselves, NOTEC, because the academia produce skills which are needed for business to thrive. Government formulates policies which has an impact on the growth of businesses. From what I've seen today, the facilities speak to the practical aspect of, of, of automotive engineering. I was happy to, to see some of what your students have produced. So it's not just the theory, they're able to translate the theory into practice. And I, I appreciated a lot of training aids because one of the things that sometimes uh, in industry we, we tend to feel there's a disconnect. We feel some of the skills we need, we feel there's a lot of theory but less of practice. But with the teaching aids that I was uh, able to uh, uh, note as we were being shown around, that, uh, that the, the facilities themselves, the classrooms, the infrastructure, it's, 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 it's state of the art, and I should say I'm uh, overly impressed. Uh, to, to answer that, I think firstly I would like to appreciate one aspect. You know, business cannot thrive without the skills. Business is driven by the skills that are coming out from institutions such as yours, such as Nautic. So there's, uh, it's, it's really like more of a triple helix uh, situation. We have the private sector, we have government, and we have the academia. And, and the three are able to help run the economy. So we cannot overemphasize the importance of uh, skills, and not just skills, but the right skills that industry needs. So your, your engagement with the private sector to come and appreciate your facilities and the type of offering in terms of skills that you are churning out. And obviously, I, I, I was happy to note that you've allowed us to, to be stakeholders also in development of your curricula. That's very important and cardinal. The, the first step, I think, has been tackled, which is ensuring there's infrastructure, suitable infrastructure, the good learning environment ensuring there's proper teaching aid. And you did, I did note in your presentation, you highlighted um, a, new, a revision of your curricula. So uh, that being said, there's now a need for just more engagement with stakeholders like ourselves to have a say or to give feedback. So it's a two-way thing. We just don't expect your institutions to request industry, but. I urge industry players as well to visit institutions like yours and have a say in the type of graduates or the content we want them to have so that that speaks to or informs your, your curricula. So I was happy to note your, part of your milestones is to revise the, the current curricula to suit industry needs. So it's, it's an appeal both to institutions like yourselves and also industry players. Any gap in skills that is noted should be brought to your attention and obviously inform uh, the curricula that you are developing. So that's, that's an area that we, we probably need to um, 
uh, 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 do a bit more. I'll speak in the context of Nautic. Engineering is always perceived to be uh, more biased towards the male folk. Uh, but I think uh, it's, it's on uh, the public media. Government is pushing the drive to in include, uh, to be more inclusive in terms of uh, gender. And uh, one of the things that I noted in your presentation is you have, uh, out of about 300 students, you have 180 on bursaries. So one of the things that could also spare that is extend of those bursaries, a good portion should be allocated to the to the girl child. So this 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 will encourage those that may have resources as an excuse. You know, we coming from a culture in Africa. If I'm the boy child and I've got my sister and we all qualify to not take, the biasness or the odds are likely. Let's let the guy do the program. But if you have opportunities to say the, the girl child who, who has an opportunity to get a, a scholarship, you, you, you probably opt to get both there. So uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing that uh, there's, there's a drive to have gender inclusiveness in, in, in institutions like this. Well, in our walkabout, we only managed to see one class. We could still see the gap. I think uh, there was a comment by my colleague that uh, we could only still see a few ladies. So we still have more to do. We still have more to do. We need to encourage the girl child also to, uh, to make decisions to pursue more engineering courses. Because I know they are more comfortable. There's a biasness or a preference to commercial courses. So we just have to keep uh, 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 sensitizing the, the girl child. It's linked to what I was saying. If, if we have more uh, uh, female students graduating from institutions like yours, industry has a wider uh, uh, population to pick from. So uh, uh, my appeal to industry is I think industry is doing fine. They, they are trying to, to pick, uh, to give opportunities to, to the girl child as well. But we needed to start from where the skills are coming from. If we have more with that skill, then the, the probability will even it out. So if you have, say, if, if Notec uh, has uh, 300 graduates every year, of those 50% uh, are, are female students, the, the odds in industry that you also employ in that program 50% uh, 50 that you employ a female. But if there are only 1% or 2%, you know, that's, that's, that defeats the purpose. So at least we can see steps by your institution to encourage more uh, 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 ladies in, in, in technical uh, uh, trades or engineering fields. Then industry, what you churn out industry is able to, to take up. And my appeal to industry players is give, give you know, in, in, in the procurement circles, there's what we call a margin of preference for certain job jobs. You know, you could just put a margin of preference or an incentive if you, if you had more Females, that's, that, that would, would help. It does because we I think one of the pillars is to have a skilled uh, workforce, a productive workforce that is rightly skilled. So we, with what the program offers, uh, you cannot divorce development from skills. I think government has been emphasizing on skills, skills transfer, and uh, uh, literally reducing the illiteracy levels in the country. So the more literates we have, the more skills we have, the more participants in industry. And with a booming economy, you know, we, we, we need not rely on experts. We need not rely on, uh, you know, Zambians, we do not have this type of skill, so let's get experts. But we could have the skill right here and, and retain the jobs right here. So, on the, so it's key for job creation, yes, and key, very key for development. Like I mentioned earlier, that business, government, and academia, you cannot divorce uh, the three. So with the, with the partnership that we have seen between the government of Sweden, 
uh, you need uh, and Volvo. So there's, it's, it speaks to what you're talking about. There's, there's the government, there's Notec as the academia, there's the uh, Volvo, the private sector, okay? And there's the implementing authority under UN and the beneficiary like uh, the government republic of Zambia. So such partnerships are the way forward. Private sector needs to partner with academia and help um, spell out the requirements of industry. And government comes in to create an enabling environment and put up policies or formulate policies that support this uh, relationship to enable to move uh, uh, the country forward. So the chamber is in support of such partnerships. And as uh, um, uh, we, we are happy, uh, if NOTEC, uh, or your institution rather, could be invited to become our members as well, because we do have academic institutions as members. So we, we want their input, we want their constant engagement. So it's, 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 it's a two-way relationship. Not to excite you, but we have heard good report about your institution. Not here, but out in industry, because your students are performing. They are not only performing here in Zambia, they are performing outside. When they go outside, they are performing in the mining sector. They are driving industry, meaning the training is adequate. So I can only wish that this model that you have here is replicated with other institutions especially the trades uh, uh, institutes, because there's, there's, that's where you have uh, skills, hands-on skills that are really needed for an economy like Zambia. We want to move away from import, importing goods, to manufacturing. You know? So we need more technical institutions. We need more hands-on training. You, you mentioned you offer diplomas, you offer crafts, you offer uh, trades. That's very important for industry. It's very important for manufacturing sector. So uh, uh, I just wish the model that you have here that you just showed us today is replicated with many other institutions because this is, this is what Zambia needs. Our case needs more tooling engineers, more, more, more tooling technicians, more, more hands-on guys that could make things uh, happen so that we move the country to more of a, a, a manufacturing-based than an, an, an import-based economy.